In the meantime, CBS This Morning did something really, really special, dedicated an entire hour to discussing the challenges and the stigmas associated with mental disorders. The mental health special Stop the Stigma was broadcast before a live studio audience, never done that before, with participants sharing individual stories with CBS This Morning co-host Anthony Mason, Tony DeCopel, and of course, Gail King. The special included a number of uh, guests, including Emmy-winning broadcast journalist Jane Pauley, who opened up about her experiences with bipolar disorder. Uh, queer Eye star Karamo uh, was also a participant, and also Lady Gaga's mother, um, which you may not know their family has dealt with mental illness as well. So CBS This Morning co-host Gail King is joining me now to talk about the event. A big first for us today, so yeah. thank you so much for having me on, because we feel really good about this conversation. I think it's a conversation that really needs to be yes. had. I think that... Um, Many, many people suffer in silence. Mm -hmm. I know within my own family, I've had very, very close family members who have dealt with both depression and anxiety, and some of them have chosen to self-medicate. Yes. And for, you know, the people that I'm thinking about, it took a really long time. And we're a close family. Yes. It took a really long time for us to figure out what was wrong. You know, yes. and then the, and, and as a family, we and felt bad that yes. we had dropped the ball. So it's so good that we're talking about and that's this. That's exactly why we are talking about it. You know, um, we had Lady Gaga's mom who said, uh, Stephanie is, is her real name, and she said her daughter was always a unique individual, and that maybe they didn't have an appreciation for that when she was younger in middle middle school, mm -hmm. and how badly she was treated by the kids, and how that just led to very unhealthy and unhelpful feelings about how she felt about herself. Yeah. Karamo, you know, from Queer from um, Queer Eye, was also talking about, you know, when he was younger, his mother would say, well, just pray, just mm. pray. And I, so I said, what does it feel like? She, he said, it feels like the, the sun never shines, mm -hmm. that you're walking around the world in a fog. But his mother would say, just pray, you'll be all right. Yes. And, uh, and, and that's what I think is so interesting, yes. that even Cynthia Germanata said, you know, I come from the school, just get a grip, suck yeah. it up, carry on. And that's not what people should be doing these days. And that's why people are so afraid to talk about it, because yeah. you don't want anybody, A, to know that you're suffering from it. And the thing that strikes me most is that we put so much emphasis on our physical health. Like if I had a lump, I, would, I wouldn't mind sharing that with you, or yes. my knees hurt, or I'm going to the doctor to fill in X, Y, and Z. I wouldn't mind sharing that with you. Yeah. But when it comes to mental health, people just back up because they're worried about being judged. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to make it so we get to the point that we're all very comfortable in talking about it without judging and without thinking less of you mm -hmm. because you're going through something. Because mm -hmm. at some point, we all do. Right. People judge themselves. And so yes. as a result, they don't get the help that they need. Yes. Um, and there is help. That's the thing. There is so much help. So much help. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you talk about uh, this whole idea of just pray about it. You made me yes. think of a personal story of a family member of mine who has suffered with depression on and off for years. And I asked her the same question, what does it feel like? Yeah. And she said, it feels like God doesn't love me. Oh. And I remember my father saying oh, to this person, wow. you know what you need to do? You need to smile more. Uh, yes. And hearing that made her mm. feel so misunderstood mm -hmm. and called sort of deeper into her shell. I you know? about that. Just, I know. Just to hear I know. Well, she's doing very well God now. God doesn't love me. Yeah. Yeah, she's yes. doing very well now. Um, and I was thinking about the famous people that you pointed out. Yeah. And how important it is for all of us, people suffering and not, to see very successful people yeah. say, yeah, I struggled. Yeah. But there's yes. something on the other side. Yep. We had experts on that said that very thing, Anne-Marie Green, that when people who are celebrities or well-known, when they come and tell their stories, because... You know, if you're the outside looking and you think, I want the life that they have, you know, it looks like everything is sunshine and lollipops, there's yeah. fame, there's lights, camera, action, you think everything is going great. Yeah. But honestly, celebrities are just like everybody else. They got the same issues as everybody else. It's just that their issues, that their names are more well known. So when they step out and say, you know, this happened to me, Jane Pauley was 50, was 50 when she was diagnosed with bipolar. Wow. Hers, you know, she went to get a treatment for a rash. They gave her the wrong medication. It triggered this. Um, she had no family history of this in her family. It triggered bipolar disease and when d bipolar disorder. Right. And when um, she was talking to her doctor, it took her three years before she told anybody. And when she said to the doctor, I'm thinking about going public, he goes, well, I don't know if you want to say it. We could say it's a thyroid issue. She, Because it did cause a thyroid issue. We could oh. just say that. And Jane said, no, I want people to know. So here's Jane Polly, successful, married, mother, career's going great. Then this happens to her where she just feels... I can't get out of bed. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it hits you that way. 
You know, one of the questions I always ask is, what does it feel like? And how do you know? How do you know when you're not just having a bad day right. and you have a what I call Houston, we have a problem and I need to get some help. Right. When it's just ongoing and continuing and you don't see any light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. We all have times where we're sad because of something that's happened in our lives. Mm -hmm. that, that's a very different kettle of fish than what people are dealing with when it comes to depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so for us to devote an hour, as you said, we've never done anything like this before. It's funny, when I went on this one, I go, so we're going to do the whole 8 o'clock hour live. People said, Gail, we do the 7 o'clock hour live, too. <laughs> but this just felt very different because we're yeah. in a different studio. We have a, a studio audience. The team has been pre preparing for this for months to get the studio, to get the right people. And we didn't just have a random audience off the street. Everybody in the audience was somebody who's been touched by this to get the right experts. So I'm really proud of what we did this morning yeah, because we've opened a door. And we hope to continue this conversation. Yeah. Is something happening here? <laughs> Just a little, a little mic adjustment. Oh. <laughs> um, this is what happens when you come to CBSN. If your <laughs> mic is hanging out, yeah. somebody comes and fixes we it. Are, Thank you, sir. We are full service. Yes. Um, what so have I you learned? Was there it. anything that sort of surprised you after you started to dig well, into this topic? Well, it surprises me to know that that you've got to keep the conversation going. And it's not enough to say, how are you doing? You have to be very specific in it. Are you thinking about harming yourself? Yes. You don't seem okay to me. Yeah. And, you know, we shy away from that because you don't even want to verbalize that to someone. Because I said to the doctor, well, isn't that giving people ideas? They go, you are not giving anybody ideas who didn't have it. Yes. And there's a lot of research that shows that people that act impulsively, if they attempt to take their life um, and they survive, that they, the minute they did it, they instantly regretted it. So don't be overcome by a dark place and something that seems very overwhelming. Yeah. Because it really is true. It really does and can get better because there's all sorts of help out there. Yeah. And it, so just by us starting that conversation today, and, and, and the doctor also said Ken Duckworth, who's amazing from uh, Boston, and Dr. Sue Varma, who's a regular on, on CBS this morning, said we've reached a tipping point. More and more people are starting to talk about it in ways that they haven't before. Mm -hmm. Young people in particular, you know, the suicide rate is up among young people, you know, 10, 10 years old to 14 to 24. It's yeah. up. And that's because kids get overwhelmed. Yeah. So we have to have this conversation. You know, one of the things that we have talked about before with CBSN Originals, we never ended up sort of working on this, but about young people and depression and suicide and the connections that they're finding with access to the smartphones. Yeah. And it has social to do media, with yes. social media being yeah. in the palm of your, not just social media on its own, but yeah. it being in the palm of your hand with, you know, technology that is designed to lure you into picking it up mm -hmm. every so every you know 15 minutes or so and these images are things that they can't get away from they can't get away from bullying the way they no, used to no, be able bullying to bullying is now in your life 24/7 right. when i was at school i don't even know if we even called it bullying there were just kids that were mean but you didn't think that it was something that you couldn't handle yeah. and you could certainly go home and that would be the end of it now it's 24/7 and they are really in your homes because we're all taking it out and looking at it mm -hmm. i mean so and even even that is a false sense of reality. And so the more, you know, there was a young woman who, who was embarrassed to tell her parents and her friends because she thought that she would be judged. So she started her own support group called the Mental Elephant, which I like the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. and, and good things come from when you can talk and feel that you are not alone. Yes. You know, one of the themes today was it's okay not to be okay and you are not alone. Yeah. Great themes, um, fantastic concept and idea, and it was a success. So, Gail, thank yeah, so you so far, much. You know, somebody asked me, how did you feel? I said, look, on a scale of 1 to 10, I think we did 11.5. Because I right. thought it was hard what we did. Yeah. But the team was so good. You know, Anthony, Tony, and I were the faces of it. But there were so many things that happened. You know, to pull this off, you understand all that has to go into yeah. it. And we did it, and we got on, and we got off cleanly. And I, I'm hoping that it is started a conversation. It's just a beginning for oh, us yeah. more to come. This is the kind of stuff that saves lives. Yeah, it's I really hope good. So. Good I use so. of the medium. Thank you, know? you Anne Marie Green as always. Thank you, Gail it's good King. To be with you. Good to be with you. <laughs> so, if you are experiencing a mental health crisis, help is available. Call up the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It's 1-800-273-8255. You can also text the crisis text line by texting TALK to 741-741. Now, CBSN will re-air the Stop the Stigma special. That's going to be tonight at 8 p.m., so you do not want to miss it.